Hello there. Saberland, how are we doing? Vader's Vault here showing off a brand new, extremely limited run of the Negotiator. So to celebrate the return of the Clone Wars, which was an extremely awesome expansion on the Star Wars story, uh, we wanted to pick one of the character sabers to go with, and why not one of the most beloved characters of all time, the Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber. Now, the saber in the animated show is uh, very similar to what you see in either Episode 3 or Episode 4, but it has more of an exaggerated feature set. Uh, so the different design cues, like a lot of things in the show, are, are a little bit uh, stylized, I should say. So we painstakingly uh, scaled and recreated uh, every detail from the show, uh, everything that could be visible in the, re in the rendered animation, and then even added a few of our own little touches uh, to go along with it. Uh, so these will be up for sale this Friday, the 21st of February at noon. That is 12 p.m. USA Eastern Time. Uh, and these will be going up. Extremely limited, like I said. Everything on this Sabre was machined, powder coated, and installed right here in-house at Vader's Vault in little old Georgia in the United States of America. And uh, so let's start at the beginning. So, uh, like I said, every every design cue on this saber is, is more of an exaggerated version of what you would see on the typical uh, Obi hilt. Uh, starting with the emitter, we've got the very large bell here, uh, and then the raised, rounded uh, emitter studs. Whereas like on the more modern Obi, uh, the episode 3 and 4, those are actually divots, but in the animated show they're actually raised studs. Uh, one in the middle for the blade plug there. And then... Uh, <clears throat> larger bell here with a nice angled slope down to it Then we've got the very heavy centerpiece here is the brass neck so it's almost solid so like a lot of times when we do thin necks uh, we try to make them as solid and beefy as possible this brass neck is no exception uh, it creates a great balance point for the saber um, being that it's right here so when you're holding this area of the saber with the blade in it uh, I mean it is so perfectly balanced it's so awesome really love that part of it. Uh, the the grenade section here is uh, again stylized instead of the V grooves uh, we have less uh, lateral grooves here in it and there are, there are less of them and it's a flat instead of a V bottomed groove uh, and then of course my favorite feature of this particular hilt is the control box. So the control box in the show is very muddy uh, not very clear so we wanted to add some details reminiscent of uh, prequel era and uh, original trilogy era sabers. So we went with uh, raised round studs of which hide the two main switches. So you have the activation switch and the auxiliary switch that are hidden among the uh, the raised studs. And then we added some engraving along the sides or the border of the control box top, uh, sort of reminiscent of the prequel era uh, control box cards that you see in some of the other film props, sort of to tie it into that uh, same time period. Then we get to the pommel, <clears throat> and the pommel again, with the exaggerated features, has the oversized cubes, uh, and there are only four of them, uh, rather than the, the Armitage Shanks hand wheel, which has more cubes, and they're much lower profile. And then, of course, the sound venting, another one of our touches, is the galactic cog uh, sound venting, sort of also to represent the era of which this is in. Now, the pommel is removable, <clears throat> very similar in design to uh, our other hilts in that it r allows access to the soundboard <clears throat> and the uh, charging. So, take that off here. And you have the access to the SD card, uh, 2.1 millimeter recharge port, the USB-C, and also holds our Bluetooth board. And uh, that is not a removable battery in this uh, Sabre, unfortunately. Uh, with the scaling, uh, it sort of worked against us where we didn't have the room to be able to get the battery in and out of the four section here. It just was too short to have clearance. Uh, but you do have two ways of charging it, uh, and uh, it'll all work out great. You'll see. So as far as the blade plug, uh, in this one you can see the screen-accurate uh, solid blade plug with the single stud in the middle. Uh, we also have, will have available a NeoPixel blade plug for those who want NeoPixel or a shine through blade plug for those who go with standard LED, uh, whereas the center stud there is made of machined polycarbonate to allow for illumination 
rather than the solid aluminum that's in there right now. And I'll show that lit up in a little while. We also have on this Sabre an exclusive font provided to us by none other than K-Sith from Sabre Font. Uh, does fantastic work with sound fonts, uh, especially the, the newer Smooth Swing variety, which of course, this is now powered by Crystal Focus 10, or CFX, uh, which has Smooth Swing in it. Uh, and you will, I'll go through that font here in just a minute. All right, let's get this guy powered on. Uh, we're gonna remove the blade plug here. 832 set screw, so a 564 Allen wrench, which will be provided with the Sabre, along with the Delrin kill key, which is not currently in it, but. Alright, normally I don't lock these in, but I'm going to do that for the video just because it's good practice. Okay. Now, on the control box, your switches are, your main activation is the second stud down, and your auxiliary is the second stud up from the bottom. So to get it powered on. It seems I've gotten into quite a mess now, haven't I? <coughs> very deep hum, very punchy ignition. different hums that it will come with so you can actually choose uh, you know when you get your saber you can enable which hums are on your actual font uh, we have it set up as different fonts on our test saber here so that I can go through and sound bank selection you haven't exactly improved audio player you haven't you haven't exactly impressed me today I'm enjoying this far too much <laughs> So while the ignitions are the same, they blend in with that punchy, uh, the, the bassy hum uh, for that real punchy uh, total experience. Just depends on your particular mood, on what you want the saber to sound like and feel like. Uh, as all shows go, the, the character sabers adopt different sounds depending on the scenes and what they need. So. Uh, the, the font that was provided to us by k -Sith is also pretty adaptable uh, and I think fits the character saber really well. It's very clean, very warm, uh, and the sound is really great coming out of the sound venting here. Uh, it's just such a great sounding saber. Uh, as far as this, the weighting, the, the pommel cube being so huge down here and the weighted brass neck being behind the emitter, actually with the 32 inch blade that we usually provide standard, as you can see, it balances like right at the emitter, if I can keep my hand steady, but which is really great because even with NeoPixel, or I'm sorry, Plectropixel blades, uh, a lot of times your balance point is several inches above the emitter uh, just because of the weight, it makes them blade heavy. Uh, but with this, with all the weight that's back here, it's really great uh, in the hand and uh, it'd be a wonderful spinner for those who do so. All right, so I'm going to take the blade out and show the uh, lighted blade plug so that we can show the different versions. So like I said, the standard blade plug is the solid top here with the solid aluminum stud there. <clears throat> and that will come standard. You can upgrade it to either shine through uh, for LED or lit if you have a pixel powered saber and you want it to be pixel powered. Uh, we can do that as well. So. With the pixel, uh, the pins push up on the blade plug, so when you press it down to make contact, it actually does recess to be perfectly flush the way that you want it. And then once you turn it on... It seems I've gotten into quite a mess now, haven't I? <coughs> so, it does light up the uh, polycarbonate stud there right in the middle, and of course, spectrum. works great with the spectrum feature. Friday, February the 21st at noon, Vader's Vault.com, 
very limited run of these uh, being we have so many projects in house we only did a you know a very small batch of the saber i don't know if we're going to do future ones so this could be your only opportunity to own a 100 percent made in america tcw hobie hilt thanks a lot hope you're having a great day and enjoy your sabers